Crop Talk TV podcast. podcast. Welcome to another episode of Crop Talk TV. I'm your host, former NFL and NFL defensive back Eric Crocker, and I am joined by my guy Brian Peacock, my co-host from Locked On 49ers. Brian, how you doing? What's up, Crocky? Getting a little video action here. We just finished our early morning, late night Monday version of the program, uh, helping out some fans with a little therapy sesh. So go check out Locked On 49ers. We're with you every day talking about these San Francisco 49ers, these knuckleheads that we call the 49ers. All right, so we we were talking before we went live, and we were talking through this one play that kind of the picture started floating around the internet of just this steel shot of freeze frame of Muhammad Sanu just running wide open, butt naked at the seam. And you were like, you know what? I'm not sure it was like just that simple of, you know, Sanu running down the seam wide open. And we started to talk through it. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to come on here, go live, and talk about or talk through this play and look at it from different perspectives from Garoppolo's perspective I brought in the Trey Lance perspective with this whole thing and uh yeah man let's let's get to it so um here we go we're going to share the screen hopefully hopefully you guys if you haven't already make sure you guys like this video subscribe I wonder if I should let's see let's put this on uh let's put this on Twitter as well yeah throw it out there to the tweets this is fun just a little a little quick film sesh of one play, one Jimmy Garoppolo 49ers offensive play, uh, one of the more frustrating plays of the entire game in that 30-18 to 18 loss. All right, someone asked, is this tomorrow's locked on? No, it's not, but we did just record that. This is just extra. We just wanted oh, to kind of come on here and talk about, like, this specific play. little bonus, little bonus episode for y'all. Croc and the cock. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, back in the day when Winkler and I were doing a podcast, just me and him, it was called Gold Faithful. It was once a week, you know, we weren't making any money off it. We were just working together in the radio biz, having a good time after work. And uh, his his um, his Twitter handle is Bay Area Wink. And I was thinking, ah, you know, maybe we should have our Twitter handles be be the same. I was thinking, oh, maybe Bay Area Cock. But I, I think maybe people will get that twisted. So maybe I won't change my <laughs> handle after all. So, um, yeah. yeah, I, I like, like P. Crocky. I like P. Croc. Yeah. It's a good one for us. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. Yeah, I think there are people surprised to see you in here. All right, so here we go. We're going to show this play now. We're going to roll it. Boom, we're adding it to the stream. And here it is. So we're going to talk through it. And as you can see right now, just on the on the freeze frame, on the still shot, you can see Muhammad Sanu running up the seam wide open. But it's not that simple. So we want to kind of break it down and look at it from different perspectives. So... Go ahead. You take the lead, Mr. Peacock. Yeah, And so this is the first thing I saw in my mentions today was just a big circle around a wide open Muhammad Sanu and be like, what do you guys think about this? And I thought, I, you can't tell anything from a still shot. I don't know what's going on with the play. I don't know what the reads were. Let's So let's rewind it and let's find out exactly what's going on here with this play. And it was a huge play in this game. The Niners were down five points, fourth quarter, third down, and three. And this was the, the interception that was – intended for Debo Samuel. So, Croc, why don't you take us through this play, and, and what are you seeing here from this alignment? I'll pause it when they get set here. A little tight end in motion. Now you got three receivers on the right, one on the left. Yep, so you got three by one here. Uh, we used to call this Trey. It's Trey because there's a tight end, right? So it's like Trey open because the tight end isn't attached to the line of scrimmage. I believe that's how it works. All right, now, the picture that Jimmy Garoppolo is seeing right now, and maybe why, you know, and I saw somebody in the comments say, well, he locked on to Debo Samuel. I think he's looking at it like, well, I have my receiver one-on-one -on -one up top. I'm like circling it with my uh, with my uh, mouse. I don't think you guys can see that though. But there we go. So we go. got one-on-one -on -one up top. And I think that's where Jimmy's just like, all right, like I'm going to go where I feel like my guy is better than their guy. And I'm going to disregard all the clutter to the bottom of the screen or to the field, as they would say, where you have the tray open to the right. And now you do have a, a MOF safety. All right, safety right there in the middle of the field. And he's king either the quarterback, but at the snap, it looked like he's king one and really helping uh, Rhodes over top. So go ahead, you take over. Yeah, and, and what I do want to say about this play is that when I when I first saw it and it was like, oh my God, okay, Sanu's wide open, what's going on here? But there's some things you have to realize, first of all, and I think what's very clear on this play 
is that Jimmy Garoppolo eliminates almost everything right off the bat because of that middle of the field safety, right? Middle of the field closed here. And if you have a post route, that's right where he's going. So Jimmy, and again, this is third and three. They need a first down here, third and three. If he's waiting around and waiting around and this is not open, that that route's already done with that little hitch route that, at the sticks for Debo Samuel. So keep that in mind when you watch this play. So I think, yes, you would want something better to come out of this play, but maybe Garoppolo getting unfairly punished for this one more so than than he deserves. Maybe, maybe he deserves a little bit instead of being like, this guy is the worst quarterback of all time, but let's let this run. So as you can see, this was the interception play. Xavier Rose ended up intercepting it. Um, I didn't get like a good view on the replay. I maybe was just so upset that I just was like, I'm not watching the replay. But you have mentioned that it kind of went off of Debo Samuel's chest a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. Jimmy's not all the way at fault for this interception happening. Right. Yeah, that's the other thing is that the ball hit his intended receiver beyond the sticks. That should have been a first down pass so that's why i don't crush jimmy as hard for this play and especially when i talk about the safety because like look right here and the safety starts out even before and it's almost like they expected there to be some it, here's what's funny is the safety is is middle of the field single high but he's actually to the right right he's almost to the the two wide receiver side at the bottom when they go in motion he actually goes to the other side like i wonder if there's a tell in this where they know that with Jimmy Garoppolo and Kyle Shanahan's offense that they know that when they go trips in a, in a play like this, that the ball's going to actually come out to the one-on-one -on -one side, or maybe he was just trying to disguise pre-snap and he knows that he's just got to be this help over the top for um, a guy that, uh, what do they call him? Did they call he say he was washed? He was trash. I don't know. Xavier Rhodes there. Everybody we <laughs> talked to before this game said that Rhodes was, was awful and not playing well. So maybe he's the help over the top there, but he bails out pretty quickly here. And yeah, you can watch Sanu here that breaks wide open. So when breaks open, I don't know if somebody was supposed to cover him. I don't know if the safety was just, you know what? He's keying the quarterback. He's keying the throw. So he's getting over the top. And look at his angle, right? Look at the safety's angle. His angle is over the top, almost as if he's uh, playing half, uh, being a half field safety, right? Like he's You're not breaking on the, on the throw and going downfield. Yeah, he's helping over the top and they just kind of vacated this. So that's it's pretty surprising. And you would love to you would love for Jimmy Garoppolo to, to recognize that and see that safety start to bail out and then come back and know that he's vacating in the middle of the field where you've got a, a post from Sanu that's going to break wide open. So now ideally, we, we yes, talked about this. So so we talked about really the decision to throw the ball to Debo was far before Sanu was even open. Right. Can we can, so it's not like, oh, I missed Sanu being open. It was like, well, I was going to Debo the whole time. I eliminated the right side of the field before the snap. Right. Yeah. He didn't he eliminated this with the single high safety. Yeah. And he knew it was third and three. He's trying to throw this route past the sticks. That that's what's in Jimmy Garoppolo's mind. He's not like uh looking at Sanu and saying, No, I don't like that wide so wide open wide receiver. I'm gonna throw over here. And part of this safety bailing out is because he's looking over there now ideally would you like to have him see that notice that the safety's bailing out and hit the big play yes absolutely you would but he ended up hitting his receiver too and it, it did go the other way but i don't think this particular play is one that garoppolo should be as crushed for as what we're seeing online um and the other thing is when sanu breaks open when when sanu breaks wide open like Garoppolo's throwing the ball there and, and he's just now breaking open. So like the, the decision is done. The decision to throw, if he was going to throw to Sanu, the decision would have had to be made to not throw to Debo right here. And then you can't come back to him. So if, if this guy carries Sanu and he stays, cause look, he's still relatively in the middle of the field and Jimmy's the decisions made, he's about to unload this pass. So it doesn't, it's not as bad as it might look to me. Right now, real quick, if you guys aren't, haven't already, make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. And also, make sure you guys listen to Locked On 49ers. This is my co-host, Brian Peacock, if you guys don't already know. And we just wanted to come on here and break down this play. Now, there is a different element to this play that we kind of want to talk about and talk through, right? And we're looking at this play, and we're looking at the safety, and clearly the safety is keying the quarterback and keying that side of the field. And one thing I wanted to kind of touch on was why – why do we not see 
Jimmy Garoppolo manipulate coverage with his eyes, right? Like how seldomly do we see Jimmy go, you know what? I'm going to look to my left knowing that's going to pull the safety that way. And then I'm going to come back right and snap a pass off into a big open window. Now we have seen Garoppolo go through reads and I'm not talking about going through reads. I'm just talking about purely manipulating coverage. That is not something that I've seen him do. And typically from, you know, veteran quarterbacks, they're comfortable with doing those things. But the 49ers do have a quarterback that does exactly that, and it's Trey Lance. So how is Trey Lance, and we saw it on the touchdown to Travis Benjamin in the preseason against the Chargers, where he looks left and holds that linebacker there, and then comes back right and hits Benjamin over the middle, and he's holding, he's looking left right at the linebacker, right in that direction to just hold him so he can flip back and squeeze that ball in there. We also saw him do it on the whole shot to – uh, Trent Sherfield in that Chargers game where uh, you had you had Trey Lance stare right down the safety just to hold him, hold him, hold him, and then boom, threw the ball right to that open spot with touch to Trent Sherfield. Why don't we see Jimmy Garoppolo do those things? A veteran who's been in the league for eight years, it almost seems like what once Jimmy sees it, he's just letting it go, and he's kind of makes his mind up pre-snap on where he wants to throw the ball. There's no manipulating of the coverage. Am, am I... Am I being a little too hard on Garoppolo, or are you seeing that as well? No, I'm definitely seeing that. It really feels like Garoppolo is, in a lot of ways, and I guess you could put some of it on Kyle Shanahan. It seems like he wants to go exactly where Kyle Shanahan designed for the thing to go and doesn't want to move off of that, doesn't want to make a play, doesn't want to manipulate coverage. He wants to just, okay, Kyle, you you designed this play for this to be open. I'm going to go to it. And I think some of his interceptions have been that sort of a way. So um, I don't think that's unfair at all. And and right. Trey, as a as a rookie, and we see it all the time with other quarterbacks, they do that. And you'd think at this point, with how long Kyle Shanahan and, and Jimmy Garoppolo have worked together, that some of those elements would have come together for this offense. And they just really haven't. I think that's what is frustrating 49ers fans right now. Right. And on this play, the reason why that came up, because I was looking at it like, well, if Jimmy maybe knows what he's seeing and understands that, okay, it looks like I have one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm pretty sure I see the safety now start to cheat over. Maybe I can look left to hold him and I can come back right to Sanu. Now that might be something that maybe more of an advanced quarterback does, but I think those are things that you would like to see Jimmy Garoppolo do at this point in his career. And when we talk about, you know, you, you heard this term thrown out there before the, you know, this, this season, right? Like, or even before the draft. Uh, can can you get a quarterback that can play above the X's and O's? And I think that's still kind of part of the X, X's and O's, but truly understanding what you're seeing on the other side of the field. And I just don't understand how we're, we're getting that level of play from a mindset standpoint from a rookie, but not Jimmy. Now, with the rookie, he might do all that and might see it. He's also liable to throw the ball five yards over to somebody's head, right? So you deal with that with, with Trey Lance. But... <laughs> when we have seen him do this, he's hit these throws. And I think that's why, for the most part, especially when he starts to get more comfortable, he's looked like the more explosive passer and a guy that's looking more to push the ball down the field as opposed to uh, Jimmy, who tends to kind of just lock on to one thing and want to get the ball out right now. Croc, one more element to this play. That's why I love this one play so much from this game. And one of the big topics for 49ers fans this whole year so far has been Brandon Ayuk. What's going on with Brandon Ayuk? Is he not running routes well? What's happening there? And when I talked about the pre-snap from Jimmy G eliminating this because of the single high safety, knowing the safe, uh, knowing the, the post to be covered, and knowing he wants to go to the sticks to Debo on a one-on-one -on -one over here, that's all fine and dandy, I think, from a pre-snap. And now things change post-snap, right? Um, but here's the other thing. Is this route combination at the bottom with, with Sanu, maybe even with that single high safety, if he hangs out there, he gets cleared out by Sanu, and you've got Brandon Ayuk at the bottom of the screen here running a little dig that he gets open on. So maybe Garoppolo should have paid a little bit more attention to this side of the field than he would have seen. Uh, maybe Sanu jump open. Maybe Sanu isn't as open if Jimmy's head's not all the way over here. But watch. I just want you to watch Brandon This Ayuk. is called the dagger concept. Dagger. I was trying to think of the concept earlier on. Dagger concept here. And let's watch Brandon Ayuk run his route. And, and I want to. I want your thoughts on how good of a like is 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 he trash? What's going on, with Brandon Ayuk? Is this a good route? Should Garoppolo have, have paid more of attention at the bottom of the screen on this play? That's a good job by Ayuk being able to kind of create that space. He widens the cornerback out, 
and then comes back underneath. Obviously, Sanu, that was a clear out route for Sanu. And we've seen the 49ers run this concept plenty of times. They, they've ran it a bunch Ton of, of times. I've seen actually uh, I make big catches on this. I remember uh, Debo has definitely made catches on it. Uh, that pass to Sanu that he dropped in the Arizona game on third down, that was a little wobbler from Trey Lance. That was this same exact concept. You had a clear out by Ayuk, I believe it was, and you had Sanu come in underneath on the dagger um, with this whole dagger concept. So this is something that we've seen from the 49ers. It's a staple in their offense, but and and just knowing how much they throw the dig route on this, I think pre-snap, Jimmy killed it and said, I'm just going to go to Debo Samuel no matter what. Because typically, they, he th they throw that dig. And if he would have been looking in that direction, he would have seen – uh, Sunu. Now, let's say the safety stayed there. The safety would pick up Sunu, but still, Ayuk would have been butt naked regardless. Yep, absolutely. And yeah, we see that dig get hit a lot in this offense. So it's not a new concept. It's not a new play. To me, I think what happened was it's third and three. You're not getting much offense. The easier throw, the one on one, your best guy, Debo, go win. I'm going to throw that. And he hit him. So that's why I can't really crush Jimmy Garoppolo for this. There's probably other plays as bad as that one still frame looks with, you know, wide open wide receivers in the middle of the field. I think it's probably a lot of other plays that we could kill Jimmy Garoppolo for in this game. Aside from this one. All right, right y'all. That's what, that's all we wanted to come on here for and talk about. I'll be, I'll be sure to post the link to the locked on 49ers podcast. Make sure you guys tune into that. We come to you guys every day, five days a week, myself, my co-host, Brian Peacock. And uh, yeah, man, that's going to do it for this episode. Want to do a little quick little film review for y'all. We might have to do this a little bit more, Peacock. This is fun. I like doing this. And yeah. hey, look out for Locked on 49ers, by the way, on YouTube. That is coming. So uh, Croc and I are going to be able to see our faces every day as well if you prefer to, to watch your podcast instead of just listen to them. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. We'll see y'all next time. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Peace. It is picked off by Aaron Crocker over midfield. He'll run it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. Crop Talk TV Podcast. Podcast. Peace.